Welcome to Good Game Spawn Point. I'm Jim. Coming up on the show... We take you through a beginner's guide to the buggy co-op survival game, Grounded. Plus, Dr. Deviso is back to challenge some young gamers in one of his experiments. I think today's creator character theme should be... Space Racing Game. Sound good? No? Too bad! Your time's already started. Go, go, go! <laughs> I'm also going to be checking out this new PSVR 2 headset. Man, isn't virtual reality so cool? Too bad I can't really see anything. Guys? 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 Just through here? gaming because I finally got my hands on this, the PlayStation VR 2. This is the PlayStation's second go at VR, after delivering their first headset way back in 2016. The main technical upgrade for the PSVR 2 is that it is double the visual resolution, which means images are sharper. And in VR, that means even more realistic, which is almost always a plus in my book. The headset also has rumble-like haptic feedback running along here. So games can make your head buzz, quite literally. It's a bit like how controllers vibrate when something happens in-game. It's not something I personally needed, but it's a fun little feature. Speaking of games, there's quite a range of experiences right out of the gate with the PSVR 2. For example, Gran Turismo 7 with added VR support, which makes for one of the most realistic driving experiences in gaming right now. Looking around inside the car, checking where opponents are coming from with the head tracking was a little weird at first, but pretty cool once I got used to it. <laughs> then there's the VR-enhanced version of City Skylines, Tetris Effect Connected, which is quite a visual experience, and even Among Us VR. Come on! I don't know what to say. <laughs> Quite a few of the big standout games on PSVR 2 right now are for ages 15 and up, so you'll want to check with your grown-ups before jumping into any of those. I will say that I'm pretty bummed the PSVR 2 doesn't support PSVR 1 games. On top of that, you have to have a PS5 for the PSVR 2 to work, so this is not a cheap way to get into VR gaming. But it is, without a doubt, one of the most sophisticated and technically impressive headsets that you can get right now. Look, I'm really hanging on for some kind of subnautica experience in VR. I mean, how cool would that be? Oh, a girl can dream. In the meantime, though, we'll be keeping our eyes firmly glued on the PSVR 2 to see how it develops. I mean, not literally glued. You know what I mean. <laughs> Yes, please, come in. Welcome to Higher School Recruitment, where we place video game characters with the employers who need them. I'm Jem Jobshaw. Please, tell me a bit about yourself. Well, I'm Waluigi. Uh, some people call me the evil Luigi, but uh, I'm trying to establish my own brands, like uh, purple's my trademark colour, I've got a moustache, and check the hat, upside down L. Very impressive. Uh, let's have a look at the CV here, shall we? I see you've got race cart driving, tennis, golf, soccer experience. Yes. Very impressive. Yeah, yeah, I am very sporty. I've, I've even competed in the Olympic Games alongside the likes of Mario and Sonic. Have you ever heard of them? Some pretty big names. Now, have you had any experience in the uh, Smash Bros roster? Uh, Waluigi? Look, no, I don't, but I have been a sticker. Oh, and a trophy, and an assist trophy. 
Okay, but to clarify, you've never actually been a playable fighter. No, but I really should have been. Wario was one, the Wii Fit Trainer was a playable character, and what, like eight Fire Emblem characters? But no Waluigi! Justice for Waluigi! I'm just gonna write down passionate here. Okay, um, uh, any special skills? Uh, well, I can make a menacing noise. Listen to this. That is very good. Uh, and what would you say your weaknesses are? Things you could improve on? Well, I'm pretty evil, but I could work on being more evil. Right, of course. More evil. Um, and where do you think you'd be best placed work-wise? Maybe a wah-fah technician, or a job at a warehouse, or I could be the voice for the alert system. Listen to this. Wah, wah, wah. Emergency. Wah, wah, wah. Wow, OK, way. that is enough of that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Waluigi. We'll be in touch. Thank you. <laughs> if there's any way that you can get me on the Smash Brothers roster, be wonderful. Uh, sure, I'll see what I can do. The backyard survival sandbox of Grounded is as enthralling as it is terrifying. But it can be hard to know where to start when you're first plonked into this pint-sized adventure. Hey, where am I? And what the heck is this place? So we've got some GGSP guidance to help you get started on the ground floor of the Grounded Garden. First up, analyse everything. As soon as you get a new resource, you should try to scan it at a resource analyzer. This will unlock new crafting recipes linked to that item. Science. You'll find resource analyzers in places like field stations, which are scattered around the map. So try to uncover these so you have lots of spots for regular scan sessions. Remember that the battery power for resource analyzers is limited. So three items at a time is all you'll be able to manage before you have to wait for cooldown. Field stations also act as respawn points if you haven't set one via a lean-to. Top tools and things to craft early. Once you've scanned a few things and unlocked some basic crafting recipes, you should focus on making some essentials. Tools like a basic peblet axe and peblet hammer can be made through the crafting menu with resources close to your initial spawn point. And once you discover acorns, make the acorn shovel, which you need to rustle up grubs and harvest resources like clay. The sprig bow and thistle arrows are also super useful, especially for flying insects. However, to craft the bow, you need gnat fuzz. And wouldn't you know it, gnats are a flying enemy. It's a bit of a gnat 22, as they say. A good way to harvest gnat fuzz is to wait until the sun sets and these garden lanterns turn on. They'll attract gnats to their light, making them easier pickings without needing a ranged weapon. The workbench is another crafting priority for the early game. It opens the way for more useful crafting. Once you have one, you can start crafting armour, which is also a must. You can start out with the easily craftable clover set, but as soon as you can, work your way toward the red ant or acorn gear, which have special stats. You get a bonus if you have a full set of the same armour too, so try to make matching pieces if you can. Hydration and nutrition. Just like in the survival game that is life itself, food and water are crucial in Grounded. So you'll want to craft a roasting spit early so you can make cooked food using ingredients like grub parts. Cooked food does spoil though, and while eventually you'll be able to craft a jerky rack for longer lasting snacks, mushrooms are also a readily available source of food that won't go off in your backpack. As for water, dewdrops hanging from blades of grass are the best source of fresh water initially, so don't forget to look up. The canteen is also an absolute essential you should craft ASAP. It's all too easy to let your quest for fresh water slip by the wayside when you're out exploring. The only tricky thing to crafting a canteen is finding grub height. You'll need to search out grubs wriggling under the earth in certain regions. 
I had most success finding these amongst the roots of the big oak tree. Know your enemy! Usually, we try to avoid playing games filled with bugs, right? But the bugs in Grounded are features, not bugs. But seriously, there are a vast array of creepy crawlies to contend with here, so it pays to get to know what makes them tick. Although you probably won't encounter ticks till later in the game. Peeping goggles equipped. Look, don't forget to use your hand binoculars to peep new creatures and reveal some info about them. Night is not all right. Daytime in Grounded is risky enough, but when night falls, the backyard is full of extra peril. Safety first. So it's a good idea to keep a torch and all the stuff you need to make a lean-to with you at all times. Then you'll always be ready to set up camp for the night and or set your respawn point. Just try to make it somewhere out of harm's way. Base yourself. Building a base, or multiple bases, is the best way to ensure security, efficient adventuring and upgrading. And like real estate IRL, it's all about location, location, location. You'll want a decent sized flat space that's somewhere safe, out of the way of spiders and out of the reach of thieving ants, but also somewhere with plentiful resources. Even better if you have a clear route to a field station so you can easily scan stuff. And while it might be tempting to get stuck into all the main story quests as soon as you can, it's worthwhile doing some exploring, crafting and upgrading early on to ensure you're well equipped. Creativity and customization. I love when games have creative modes. They're such a great way of just playing around and getting familiar with things without worrying about getting dive bombed by giant mosquitoes. You can try out different base building designs in creative or just explore the map to get the lay of the land. And if things feel a bit too challenging, Grounded has a bunch of different settings options that can help. From an overall mild mode to ignoring hunger and thirst. And there's an arachnophobia mode if you would prefer not to see those particular eight-legged enemies quite so, well, eight-legged. So find a challenge level that suits you. Well, I hope that helps you survive and thrive in your first few days of Grounded, whether you're playing solo or in online co-op. I wish you the best of luck in your quest to figure out just why you've become smallified and how to become embiggened again. So, Burgle's memories are on this super chip. Kind of makes me want to play some video games. Not that my parents would let me. <laughs> Dark depths of the GGSP laboratory. A scientist and his AI assistant have worked tirelessly to concoct the perfect noob juice formula. They're almost there, but now they need your help. This is Dr. Devise's excellent experiment. Hello, gamers, and welcome back to Dr. Devisor's excellent experiment. Aisa. Who are the little lab rats for today? Sorry, Doctor, I didn't know you wanted lab rats. I brought... It's just an expression, Aisa. Who are the test subjects? I mean, if you wanted rats, you could have just asked. Never mind, Aisa. A test subject, please. Well, Doctor, helping with today's experiment, we have Magnus. Magnus's favorite color is blue. If he could live in any video game world, it would be Roblox. And his favorite game character is Link. And this is Luca. Luca's favorite game is Minecraft. His speciality gaming subject is Pokemon. And his favorite snack is cheese and crackers. Thank you, Ice. And welcome to Magnus and Luca. Today we're going to play Create a Character. Like from a video game? Yes, yes, of course. I'm not even going to try to explain this one, Ice. Good decision, Doctor. Create a Character is a game designed to test your imagination. You'll each need to create a custom character from a box of costume parts that fit a game theme. Once you're dressed, think of your character's name, special abilities, and what your fictional game is called. You'll have a limited time to dress yourself, and I'll analyze the results. And what if they don't uh, dress to impress? Isn't this your experiment? Yes, yes. I know. See, what'll happen is I'll, uh, 
What'll I do? Well, normally you make them taste test the noob juice formula. The noob juice, of course! If we normally do that, we'll keep it consistent. For science! The noob juice is made of stardust, noob tears, and pixel essence. Neither of you are allergic to those things, are you? No. no. I think today's create a character theme should be space racing game. Sound good? No? Too bad! Your time's already started! What? Go, go, go! Spider! <laughs> spider! A spider in space? Yeah. A shark! Yeah. Oh. Classic space creatures, these things. Yeah! Sure. How about A the... cowboy spider in space. I think I've seen that movie. Oh, yes. <laughs> Let's go! A ukulele-sized guitar. A shark favorite. You want a BBQ? No, I don't want a BBQ. I'm good at guitar. The spider is reconfiguring. <laughs> okay. We still have time, right? Ten seconds! What? Move what? swiftly or forever hold your costume. Christmas! Time! <laughs> That's time! <laughs> Time to find out about your characters. I've heard of the, the turtle and the hare, but the shark and the spider, my goodness. All right, Luca, please tell us, what is the name of your character? The name of my character is Shark Shredder. And what are your special abilities? I can chomp down on my opponents to severely slow them down. And what is your fictional game called? The game I am in is Intergalactic Races. Intergalactic racers, very good. Thank you, Luke. Magnus, please, step forward. And happy holidays to you as well. Oh, oh yes. Yes, Christ yes. Christmas edition. Now, what is your character's name? The name of my character is Spooder Shooter the Third. And your special abilities? I have this lamb laser that shoots out tiny lambs inserted with electricity. And what is your fictional game called? Cheeseball Planet Racing. Not bad at all, unfortunately. Mm. Aisa, what was the result? Not bad at all is correct. I've determined that both of these games would be adequately playable. Looks like the taste test is on you again, Doctor. Ah, -ha. you're quite enjoying this, aren't you? Yeah, <laughs> very much. Ah, oh. Please oh. don't taste like mustard. Please, anything oh, but mustard. That stinks. Ah, oh. mustard. Uh. I'm gonna have to lie down. Back to you in the studio. Another successful experiment. Bye bye. Oh, God. Alrighty, Harry, I'm sure you have well and truly digested that bad luck banana by now. Oh. Definitely. So he's hoping we have a nice, smooth Ask SP question answering session this week with no potassium related interruptions. Uh, would you like to do the honors and kick us off with our first video? I certainly would. First up, we have a video from Cooper. Hi, I'm Cooper and I have some questions for you. One, will you review Minecraft Legends? Two, have you reviewed Minecraft Dungeons and will you too? And three, are there any new Lego games coming out this year? I saw please do these. Warden King, Miscellaneous 1, Miscellaneous 2, Miscellaneous 3, and Miscellaneous 4. And one more thing. What do you give this classic Sonic Ring out of seven chaos animals? Bye. Oh, thanks, Cooper. We will definitely be reviewing Minecraft Legends when it comes out in April. It's a pretty big game, and we're super keen to crack into it. So yes, we did review Minecraft Dungeons back when it came out in 2019. You can search for that review online if you want to check it out. There's loads of new DLC available for it now too, so there's even more to the game than when we first reviewed it. As for whether there'll be any LEGO games due out this year, well, I haven't heard about any new major releases for 2023. After all, last year was a pretty big one for LEGO games. Hit the target hard, give it everything you got! With LEGO Star Wars, the LEGO Skywalker Saga, LEGO Brick Tales and LEGO Brawls. Although some keen eyes have spotted some job ads over at TT Game Studios, the devs who make the LEGO games, and apparently they're looking for people to work on a new LEGO game based on a major IP. 
AKA intellectual property, which means a new big Lego game may very well be in the works soon. And it'll probably be based on a world we're already familiar with. But I doubt the game they're referring to will be ready this year. Yes, it looks like we'll just have to be patient for now. But Harry, we have some art to get to, which means that we need the Art Critique Berets. Hand if you please. Thank you. What on earth is that? Oh, it's the hand! Don't worry, they're really, really cool. If you ever need stuff handed to you, they've got you covered and they give the crispest high fives. Nice. Wow, this beret is pretty cool. Oh, it is, isn't it? And it gives you art critiquing powers, hence the name. I definitely feel more critical. Ah, perfect. Now, to the art. Perfect in its pixelated simplicity. And of course, a ring is a classic symbol of the cyclical nature of life itself. Mm, yes, yes, very symbolic. And of course, rings are also a symbol of a, a, a sonic and collecting things. Very deep indeed, Harry, very deep indeed. We must simply give this art a perfect seven out of seven chaos emeralds, must we not? Oh, we musteth. Thank you, Cooper. OK, then, off with the berets and on to the next question. And this one comes to us from Sue Ann. Hi TGSP, Saran here. I have two questions for you. One, any Pokemon game recommendations for the Switch? Two, do you have any tips in Overcooked 2? And I start, please do these. Sarcastic yawn. Oh really? Offline, offline yawn. Bye. Aw, oh, thank you, Isa, and thank you, Sue Ann. If you're after some Pokemon game recommendations for Switch, well, Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu might be a good start if you haven't played many from the main series before. These take inspo from Pokemon Yellow and feature the original 151 Pokemon. I also reckon Pokemon Sword and Shield is pretty good for a taste of that classic Pokemon formula, mixed with a bit of a more modern flair and a few updates. True, or there's Pokemon Legends Arceus if you want to see how a more open world can work within the Pokemon formula. And outside of the mainline series, Pokemon Snap is a lot of photogenic pokey fun. You could also look into Pokemon Unite for a completely different style of game. It's a 5v5 multiplayer online battle arena, or MOBA, but with Pokemon characters. It's free to play, it's on Switch and mobile, and if you have some friends you can team up with online to play with, even better. Ah, so much pooky fun and so little time. As for some Overcooked 2 tips, well, my main tip is to go in with a solid game plan. Try designating particular jobs to particular players. Depending on the kitchen, maybe someone's in charge of prepping, someone's on cooking and plating, someone delivers meals, and someone does the washing up, perhaps. However it shakes out, working out what everyone should be doing ahead of time is the best way to keep things running as smoothly as possible. What about you, Harry? Any thoughts? My top tip is communication. Oh, cool. Did you want to elaborate on that? Oh, yeah, oh, totally. It's good to clearly and calmly communicate what needs to be done in each overcooked kitchen challenge. Try not to resort to chaotic yelling wherever possible. <clears throat> Gem. I don't know what you mean, Harry. I would never devolve into chaotic yelling. When was the last time you ever heard me yell chaotically? About two seconds ago. That's a good point. You got me there. Well, I think that is all the time we have for Ask SP today. Yeah, if you have a question for us, go here to send it in. And remember, if your video gets picked for the show, we'll send you a sweet GGSP loot pack. And that, my friends, is all the GGSP we have time for this week. But next week on the show... I'll play the new Hello Neighbor spin-off, Hello Engineer, as part of a gaming roundup. Plus, Dr. Divisor will be back with another disturbing noob experiment. Until then, jam out. Harry out. You know, that was some really impressive website swishing. You're a natural. Thank you. I majored in website graphic hand swishing at Just University. You know, I think the hand went there, actually. That's how I know you. Huh. Small world. Yeah.